described as one of the greatest ever guitarists. Jeff Beck has died at the age of 78. It's one of the most influential rock guitarists of all time. Jeff Beck has died at the age of 78. The British musician rose to fame in the 1960s as part of the Yardbirds before but forming the Jeff Beck group with Sir Rod Stewart. Our arts correspondent David Silito looks back at his career. Hi ho, silver lining. 1967. Jeff Beck looked to have the hit that was going to turn one of the great guitarists of the 60s into a star. But almost as soon as he recorded it, he was having doubts. His career was not going to be catchy pop songs. Hey! 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 He'd made his name in the Yardbirds, replacing Eric Clapton. In the Jeff Beck group, he helped make Rod Stewart a star. And pioneered a blues rock sound that others would turn into massive chart success. He was much admired. The Rolling Stones asked him to join. He worked with Stevie Wonder, David Bowie, Kate Bush. But the critical acclaim did not turn into sales. However, in a career that lasted more than 60 years, he had more than earned his place as one of rock's great guitar heroes. Let's speak now from Los Angeles to Gene Simmons, uh, lead singer of KISS. Gene, very good morning to you, and thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, do you know what? I'm thinking when you hear the tributes to Jeff Beck there from all those stars, so many stars, it gives those of us who are not musicians just a sense of how important he was. Well, look, uh, if you talk to anybody of note who actually plays guitar, they will all point to Jeff Beck, <clears throat> the one and only guitarist. And I'm a little choked up. I did a previous interview and I could barely get through it because he meant so much to so many of us. Uh, I knew him personally as well. But I will tell you that we all admire Jimmy Page, the great Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton, you know, the iconic, especially English guitarists, but they will all tell you that only Jeff Beck could play that instrument in ways that they couldn't dream of in fusion, modern fusion, jazz, blues, almost any form. And uh, the other great guitar players, Brian May and everybody uh, who are, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say I, I know them and admire them so much they will always point to Jeff Beck, you know, the governor, as they say. Uh, if you don't mind, I want to tell you something a little bit about Jeff Beck, the man. And I mentioned this before in another TV interview, and it's important to talk about Jeff. We can't let this go by. You've got to show the uh, new young fans that it's not just pressing a button and letting a robot or a computer take over and boom, 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 where everybody's dancing up and down. That's all well and good. But there is a craft to playing that guitar. And you can learn how to play a guitar. There's no question about it. But something about maybe God, every once in a while, God smiles down and creates a Jeff Beck. It doesn't happen often. Um, I was proud to be the presenter at the Classic Rock Awards, and all the greats were there in the audience. I mean, Brian May and everybody. And Jeff was over in the corner. And my son, Nick Simmons, was with me because he's such a big rock fan. And he said, Dad, Dad, look, there's Jeff Beck. I'm going, yeah, he's great. Isn't he, isn't he amazing? Because everybody's going, that's Jeff Beck. That's Jeff Beck. And he said, oh, God, I'd love to meet him. I said, you want to meet him? Oh, don't worry about it. So I got up and walked over to Jeff and I said, Jeff, please understand. 
you know, I'm a, I'm a father and my son just worships the ground you walk on. Please come over and say hello to him. And in Jeff Beck fashion, he said, oh, sure. He just walked over and says, all right. All right, Nick. He shook his hand to say, how are you? And my son, you know, I, I laugh about it now as sad as the day is. My son literally couldn't blurt out words. What he, you know, things that came out were not words. He was just so overcome. And uh, when Jeff left, he started to cry. He was just so overcome by it. Jeff Beck, the man, self-effacing, not at all, almost unaware of what a giant he is, because Jeff is with us right now. I will tell you that our little band, when we tour the world and put on makeup and put on these extravagant shows, right before then, we play music as we're putting on our makeup. And so help me God, every single night that we're putting on the makeup, I put on the Jeff Beck group, that first that first album, Truth, and then the second album, Beckola. And let me tell you something, if you haven't experienced Jeff Beck, you must, you can't leave this planet without having experienced, listened to the astonishing man. And if you're a symphony fan, you must listen to the Jeff Beck version of Nessim Dorma, the classic uh, piece of music with a symphony orchestra. It will blow you away. So do yourself a favor. Forget about Gene Simmons or anybody else talking about them on TV and respectfully all the fine folks at the BBC. Turn down the lights. Put on that, that first Jeff Beck group at uh, album and witness greatness. Gene, um, I think lots of people are going to be downloading Morning It's Naga. Lots of people are going to be downloading this music today just to kind of make sure, as you say, they don't leave this planet without hearing it. The great thing about Jeff as well, you know, he started, what, in the 60s, but as recently as last year, he was releasing an album with Johnny Depp. He absolutely kept up to date and pushed the boundaries of music throughout his career. It is true that, uh, you know, F fickle is the public. You know, the public is fickle and styles of music come and go and come and go. Jeff Beck is forever. It's evergreen. And I will tell you, I was actually at Electric Lady Studios in in the studio itself when Stevie Wonder wrote Superstitious. Very superstitious. That was written for Jeff Beck. Jeff was there. He uh, tried to do a version of it, and eventually Stevie decided to record it himself. Uh, everybody wanted Jeff on their records. Everybody. Bon Jovi and God, you name it, across, ran across. And then when the, Jeff's later work in jazz and fusion completely pushed the boundaries of what rock guitarists did, and Jeff mm -hmm. continued, Jeff was busy uh, planning a tour. He was just about to go out and tour again. So I understand the BBC historically refers to Jeff Beck, that 60s iconic guitar. No, no. Jeff Beck is here and now, continues with us. And even though, sadly, he's gone, his music will live forever. Uh, Gene, it's been delightful speaking to you this morning. I, I, I really appreciate your, your very personal insights. And we are all, you know, I think a lot of people have heard you this morning gone, do you know what, I will go and listen to some of that stuff by way of tribute. So thank you so much. Really lovely speaking to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm fascinated by Jeff Beck doing Ness and Dorma. I've already looked it up. I'm going to be loading that today just to hear it. It'd be quite remarkable. But one of the things that emerged this morning, of course, while we've been on air and overnight, is many of the tributes to him from some very significant figures from music. Mick Jagger, for example, has tweeted, with the death of Jeff Beck, we have lost a wonderful man and one of the greatest guitar players in the world. We will all miss him so much. And Sir Rod Stewart has said he was one of the few guitarists that, when playing live, would actually listen to me sing and respond. Jeff, you were the greatest, my man. Thank you for everything. Rest in peace. And this from Ronnie Wood. Now Jeff has gone. I feel like one of my band of brothers has left this world, and I'm going to dearly miss him. I'm sending much sympathy to Sandra, his family, and all who loved him. I want to thank him for all our early days together in Jeff Beck Group, conquering 
America. So some of the tributes there to Jeff Bay. We were talking to Gene Simmons earlier, weren't we? And he was saying that if anyone gets the chance today to download a couple of albums, but he also said that he'd done this version of Ness and Dorma. The classic, of course, three tenors, you know, but he's done it. And I've had people who've been getting in touch by social media saying, I've listened to it, and it does. It's yeah. amazing. It's Disease, well worth it. If you do one thing today, yeah. do that. Get it on a playlist. Get better. it on a playlist.